Hi, this is Sahana. In this video, we are going to learn C Sharp properties. In C Sharp, property is a member of a class that provides flexible mechanism to read, write, and compute the value of a private field. Properties can be used as if they are public data members, but there are special methods called accessors. Properties enable a class to expose a public way of getting and setting values while hiding implementation or verification code. Let's understand properties with the help of this console application. See, let's add a class. Right click, add a class. I will name it as student. As mentioned earlier, property provides a way to read, write and compute the value of a private field. Let's add few private fields to this class. I will add name, age and grade. These are private fields. Now I will create a property for this name field, which is a private field. See, here is a property for this name field. Here we are using access modifier as public. We are using data type same as this private field and the name of the property is name. And here we have get accessor and we have set accessor this get accessor returns the value of this private field and this set accessor sets the value to this private field next we are going to create properties for this name for this age and grade fields this is a property for age here we have a, here we have a pair of get and set accessors and here we have a property for grade with properties, we can not only just get and set the values, we can also compute the values. Here we have name property and inside set method, we are assigning value to this name field. Before assigning value to this name field, I can verify if the value is, if the value is null or empty. I can verify if the value is null or empty. If the value is not null or empty, I will assign the value to this name field. This way we can compute the value before assigning value to this private field. Let's understand this with one more example. Here we are here we are assigning value to this grade field. Instead of directly assigning, I can even check if the value is greater than 0, if the value is less than or equals to 100. Here is a common syntax that we use to create properties. As per MSDN, there are different approaches to create properties. First one is properties with backing fields. What we have seen in our example is this approach, then expression body definitions and auto implemented properties and required properties. Properties with backing field. This approach uses a private backing field for setting and retrieving the property value. The get accessor returns the value of the private field and the set accessor sets the value of the private field. What we have seen in this example are the properties with backing fields. Expression body definition. This approach often consists of single line statements that just assign or return the result of an expression. Let's understand this approach with the same example. Here we have private field name and here we have a property. If we have to turn this into expression body definition, then we are going to modify the way we write this code. Let's see how to do that. Here we have get method. I will remove this get method and I will write like this. We are using this get keyword. Then we are using this arrow operator and here we are specifying the name of the private field. Now, instead of this set method, we can write like this. Use the set keyword, then use the arrow operator, then write the statement. This is how we can write using expression body definitions. Next approach is auto implemented properties. We go for auto implemented properties when we don't need custom logic in the property getters and setters. In case of auto implemented properties, we don't declare private backing field. The compiler automatically generates the backing field for us. If we have to create auto implemented properties for the student class, it would be like this we create auto implemented properties like this. In this case, we don't declare private backing field. We directly write the property name and we write get and set accessors like this. We go for this approach when we don't want to write any custom logic for these accessors. Next, we have required properties. This concept is introduced in C Sharp 11. In this approach, we use required keyword after the access specifier. And this forces the client code to initialize the property. 
we write required properties like this. Here we are using required keyword. We can also make the properties read only or write only. We write read only property like this. We write only get accessor. We skip the set accessor. We write the write only property like this. We skip the get accessor. We use only set accessor. These are the different ways to write properties which best suits our requirement. I will show you how to use these properties. Before that, I will add a constructor. I will use the properties with validation logic. I have opened program.cs file. To use these properties, first we should create instance of the student class. Here we are creating instance of the student class. As we have parameterized constructor, we are directly passing values to that constructor. Next, we can access the properties like this. Here, using this object, we are accessing the properties and we are assigning the value. Here, in these cases, set accessor will be called and we are retrieving the property value. In this case, get accessor will be called. Let's run this application. See, here we have the output. I hope the session was useful. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.